Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus, which is really like looking at definite integrals. Let's start by reviewing what we talked about last time, which is definite integrals, and we just kind of did a quick introduction. The definite integral of a function f that is continuous over a closed interval a, b is a number that corresponds to the area between the graph of f and the x-axis on this interval from a to b. So how we wrote that was the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of a. So this capital F is the integral of lowercase f of x. And we also said before that we do not have to have a constant of integration when we're using definite integrals because we are gonna get a numeric answer for all of our integration. So I'm going to take some time, we're going to do a bunch of different kinds of definite integrals and talk about what happens without substitution or with substitution. So the first one I have is the integral from 3 to 5 of 2x dx. So I'm going to start by integrating. So I have 2x squared over 2. I'm going to plug in 5 and then plug in 3. So this line that I'm writing on the other side tells me I've already integrated, so I don't write the integral sign again, but I'm kind of just waiting a minute to simplify before I plug in the bounds, and that's what these 5 and 3 are called, are bounds. The 2 cancels here, so I can get rid of the 2, and I can see I just have x squared from 5 to 3. I'm always going to start with the larger numbers, so I'm going to do 5 squared, and then I'm going to subtract 3 squared. 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9, 25 minus 9 is 16. Let's try that again. This time I have the integral from 4 to 7 of 5 dx. So this 5, there's no x. So remember when we have a constant, I'm just going to give it an x. And then I use my bounds of 7 and 4. I put 5 times 7 minus 5 times 4. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 4 is 20. 35 minus 20 gives me 15. The next one says integrate from 2 to 4 of 12x squared dx. So I'm using my power rule. If this was x squared, so it's going to increase to 3. I'm going to divide by 3. And then let's put our bounds over on the right and say we're going to get to them in a minute. I'm going to simplify. 3 goes into 12 four times. So now I have 4x cubed. Put it in 4, put in 2. So I'm starting with 4 times 4 cubed minus 4 times 2 cubed. 4 times 4 cubed is 256. 4 times 2 cubed is 32. So 256 minus 32 gives me 224. The next one I have the integral from 1 to e of 9 over x dx. It might help to kind of separate this one. Um, so I say 1 to e of 9 times 1 over x dx. I want you to remember that the 1 over x becomes ln. So I have 9 times the natural log of x from 1 to e. I didn't write the absolute value because e and 1 are both positive. So I have 9 natural log of e minus 9 natural log of 1. Um, the natural log of e is 1, so 1 times 9 is 9. Natural log of 1 is 0. 0 times 9 is 0. 9 minus 0 gives us 9. The next one I have is the integral from 1 to 5 of 30 over x squared dx. I'm going to rewrite that also. I want to change this to a power, so I'm going to put 30x to the negative 2 dx. So this is going to give me 30. x raises to the negative 1. I divide by negative 1, and then I need to put in my bounds, which are 5 and 1. I'm going to rewrite this because it looks a little messy to me, like when I think about plugging in 5 and 1 with a negative 1 power, it kind of doesn't resonate well. So the x to the negative 1 here, I'm just going to put in the denominator, so I'm going to make that an x, and then this negative 1 I'm going to attach to the 30, so I have negative 30. I put in 5, I put in 1. So this is negative 30 over 5 minus negative 30 over 1. I say be careful when you have the double negatives. Make sure that you see there's two of them. Let's go ahead and make them positive. Negative 30 over 5 is negative 6, and then I add positive 30. My answer is 24. The next one I have the integral from 1 to 8 of the cube root of x dx. So another time that I feel like the first step should be rewrite it. So I'm going to write it to the 1 3rd power. So 1 third, when I add 1, it's 4 over 3. I have to also divide by 4 over 3, and then I put in 8 and 1. 
So before I put in the bounds, let's go ahead and flip this 4 over 3 to 3 over 4. And then I have x to the 4 thirds. And then I put 8 and 1. So this says I have 3 fourths. Um, I have 8 to the 4 thirds power. And then I have minus 3 fourths of 1 to the 4 thirds power. So you can do these powers in your calculator, and if you're using like a handheld scientific calculator, just make sure you put parentheses around the 4 thirds. That way it doesn't raise it to the power of 4 and divide by 3. That way it knows to do the cube root. Um, remember the cube root is happening first, so the cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 4th is 16, so this is just doing it without a calculator times 3 fourths. Um, luckily, 1 to every power is 1, so this 1 to the 4 thirds is 1. So what I have right now, 3 times 16 over 4, well, I can say 4 goes into 16 4 times. Um, 3 times 4 is 12 minus 3 over 4. If you wanted to, you could change that 3 fourths to 0.75 and then you could get 11.25 as the answer. So kind of up to you. If you want to leave it in fractions, that's okay. But if you would like to put it as a decimal, that's fine also. This next one, I have the integral from 0 to 1 of 3 plus e to the x dx. So the 3 is going to get an x. e to the x is going to stay as e to the x. I have 1 and I have 0. So the first time through, I'm putting 1 everywhere. So I have 3 times 1 plus e to the 1. I'll put that in parentheses. And then minus, I have 3 times 0 plus e to the 0. I think the parentheses are helpful. That way you can see that you have two parts. And also, it helps with the negative sign to make sure it pushes all the way through. So the first part, 3 plus e is 3 plus e. Minus, 3 times 0 is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2 plus e. I'm going to leave the answer like that. I'm not going to put it in my calculator. I'm just going to say this is the answer. Here we get to a different part where I'm having to integrate and it's not exactly ready to go. There is a little shortcut I can teach you here that might be helpful, is if you have e to the kx. So the kx is just k is some kind of number. There is this shortcut that you can make this e to the kx over k plus c. Um, what this is doing is it's stepping around doing substitution. So you might find that really helpful, especially for a little problem like this. Instead of having to do u is 2x and du is 2 and go through all those steps, you could use this shortcut. So I'm going to do that for this one. So e to the 2x will be e to the 2x. I'm going to divide by 2 because that's the new rule I taught you. And then 0 and 4. So let's plug in 4. I have 2 times 4 in the exponent over 2 minus e to the 2 times 0 over 2. So 2 times 4 is 8, so I have e to the 8th over 2. e to the 0 is 1 and over 2. Again, I'm going to leave it like that as like the exact answer and just watch whether I say like put in a number as a decimal or leave it alone. Um, just to show you what it would be, let me put in my calculator. Um, e to the 8th over 2 minus 1 half is like 1,489.98. I rounded to two decimals. So let's try that rule again that I just gave you, that e to the kx dx when I integrate will be e to the kx over k. So we'll use that. So here from negative 2 to 2 of e to the negative 0.3x dx, I'm going to start e to the negative 0.3x. And then I'm going to divide by negative 0.3. I'll put in 2. I'll put in negative 2. So I'm going to plug the 2 into the top. So I have e to the negative 0.3 times 2 over negative 0.3 minus, I'm going to put parentheses, e to the negative 0.3 times negative 2 over negative 0.3. So this looks like e to the negative 0.6 over negative 0.3 minus e, negative negative will be now positive 0.6 over still negative 0.3. Now this looks kind of messy, so I am going to go ahead and put that in my calculator. Um, and again, let's do like two decimal places, so I'm going to call it 4.24. 
Next, I have the integral from 1 to 5 of 4x plus 2 dx. So we're going to integrate. I have 4x squared over 2 plus 2x from 1 to 5. I'm going to cancel the 2 and the 4. Just keep it simple. This is 2x squared plus 2. And then I'm going to go from 1 to 5. So let's start by plugging in 5. So I have 2 times 5 squared plus 2. Put that in parentheses, minus parentheses, 2 times 1 squared plus 2. So 5 squared is 25, 25 times 2 is 50, 50 plus 2 is 52. And then the second set of parentheses, I have 1 squared is 1, so I have 2 plus 2 is 4, so 52 minus 4 is 48. Now close to that, if you notice I had 4x plus 2, and this time I said let's do 4x plus 2 cubed. So I am making it bigger and I want you to see like what are we going to do. So of course you have choices. You could multiply this whole thing out, like do 4x plus 2 times 4x plus 2 times 4x plus 2, but that's pretty long. Um, so I don't think that's an efficient way to do it. So what we're going to do instead is substitution. So I'm going to say u is equal to 4x plus 2. The derivative of that, 4x is 4 dx. So we've done this in the past. We know we're trying to make it match. And so I say, well, I don't really see a 4 over here. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 4. And I'll have 1 fourth of du is equal to dx. So I have the integral. The 4x plus 2 is a u, and it's cubed. The dx is 1 fourth of du. But now I have changed everything. Like the bounds were about x, the u though is different. So what I'm going to do is something called changing the bounds. So here I had x was equal to 1. Well, u is 4x plus 2. So u is going to be 4 times 1 plus 2. So I'm just taking this value of x, which was the bottom, and plugging it into the value of u. 4 plus 2 is 6. So this is my bottom number now. Same thing for the top. I had x was 5. So I'm going to do u is 4 times 5 plus 2. So I'm plugging it back in. So 4 times 5 is 20 plus 2 is 22. So that's my upper bound. Now I do normal integration. So u cubed becomes u to the fourth over 4. Separately, I have this 1 fourth. That was from my substitution. I'm going to plug in 22. I'm going to plug in 6. I'm going to put those two 4s together, so this will be over 16, um, and this is u to the 4th, 22, and 6. So this 22, putting to the power of 4, is probably going to be pretty big, but that's okay. So I'm going to do two, 22 to the 4th divided by 16 minus 6 to the 4th over 16, and just plot this all in your calculator at once. Um, I got a whole number, which is great. So I got um, 14,560. So same kind of thing for this one. I have the integral from 1 to 5. I have x times 3x squared minus 1 cubed. So I'm going to start with u is 3x squared minus 1. du is 6x dx. And I see that I have the x and I have dx, right? I can see that in my problem, but I don't have the 6. So I'm going to divide by it. 1 6 of du is x dx. So my integral is starting out as u cubed times 1 6 of du. Remember we have to change the bounds. So when x is equal to 1, u will be 3 times 1 squared minus 1. So I just take this value of 1, I plug it into whatever I called u. 3 minus 1 is 2, that's my lower bound. Do that again, plug in 5. So I have u is 3 times 5 squared minus 1. So this is a lot bigger. 5 squared is 25. 25 times 3 is 75. Minus 1 is 74. So my upper bound is 74. Okay. Integrate. u cubed becomes u to the 4 over 4. I have this 1 over 6 left from the integration. I have these bounds of 74 and 2. I'm going to do 4 times 6. So let's make that u to the 4th over 24. And then we're going to plug in 74 and 2. Again, I'm expecting kind of big numbers, so I have 74 to the 4th over 24 minus 2 to the 4th over 24. When I grab my calculator, I got 
1,249,440. Kind of like the bigger the exponent, the bigger the number we end up with. So here's another one. And maybe this is a good time to maybe like stop and try one without me and then come back and check your number because it's always good to practice as you're going and not just watch, but to actually do. So try that and come back and see. So hopefully you decided that u was x squared plus 9 du would be 2x dx, and we're missing the 2, so we're going to say 1 half of du is equal to x dx. So I'm integrating. This square root is going to be u to the 1 half, and then times 1 half du. So I have a 1 half because of the du, and then I have a 1 half power because of the square root. When x is equal to 0, u is going to be 0 squared plus 9, which is 9. There's my lower bound. When x is equal to 4, then u is going to be 4 squared plus 9. So 4 squared is 16, 16 and 9 is 25, so I have 25 as my upper bound. Now I integrate, so I add 1. That gives me 3 halves as the power, and then I divide by 3 halves. I multiply by a half, and then I just keep my bounds for now. This 3 halves in the denominator, I want to flip over to be 2 thirds. I'm going to bring the 1 half to the front just to kind of organize, and I have u to the 3 halves. So let's cancel the 2's. So I have 1 third. Now u is 25, let's do to the 3 halves, minus 1 third of 9 to the 3 halves. Just like before, you can throw this in your calculator, but be like careful, if you're using a handheld, you might have to put parentheses around the exponent. You also know that 3 halves is 1.5, so if you want to put in 1.5 as the exponent, that absolutely works. All right, that gave me 32.666, so I'm going to call this 32.67. All right, the next one, I have the integral from 1 to 2 of x plus 3 over x squared plus 6x plus 5 dx u is going to be x squared plus 6x plus 5. du, I get 2x plus 6, and that's dx. Um, we're kind of trying to see, we're pretty much seeing the same thing every time, that it's not matching. So I'm going to take a 2 out, which gives me x plus 3 dx, which is what I want. So I know I can just make this 1 half of du, and that'll be x plus 3 dx. So the integral part, I'm going to put the 1 half du in the numerator, and I'm going to put the u in the denominator. So let's look at our values for our bounds. We have to look at x is 1, x is 2. We're plugging this into x squared plus 6x plus 5. So u is 1 squared plus 6 times 1 plus 5. This is 1, 6, and 5. That's 12. So let's put a 12 down here. And then at 2, I have 2 squared plus 6 times 2 plus 5, so that's 4, 12, and 5, which gives me 21. Um, before we integrate, I'm going to rewrite it again. So I have 12 to 21. I have a half of 1 over u du. I just like the look of that better because I think the 1 over u becomes ln. So I have 1 half natural log of u and then 21 and 12 is my bounds. So we have a half of the natural log of 21 minus a half of the natural log of 12. I threw that in my calculator, I got something really small, I got 0.28, and I'm just doing two decimal places. Same thing here, I want to integrate, so u is going to be 4x plus 5, du is 4dx, I divide by 4, so there I just have dx, so I have this nice um, integration to do. Now this 7 I never use, so I'm just going to hold on to the 7th. I have that 1 over 4, and then I have 1 over u, so I want to see there's like three little pieces here. The coefficient of 7, the 1 fourth from the substitution, and then the 1 over u. Now remember, I need to look at what happens when x is 2, and then when x is 8, so what will u be? So u is going to be 4 times 2 plus 5, that's 13, 
and then separately it'll be 4 times 8 plus 5, which is 37. Um, this 7 and the 1 fourth, we'll just make that 7 over 4. The 1 over u becomes the natural log, and then I have the two numbers, 37 and 13. So we have 7 over 4, natural log of 37, minus 7 over 4, natural log of 13. That's not going to be pretty, but we just put it in the calculator and write down what we get. Um, again, I'm just going to give two decimal places, which is 1.83. Um, with e, so we talked about e earlier, we did a shortcut, but this one, notice I have 8x e to the x squared plus 1. So in previous talks, I've said when I just have this 1e, I'm going to let u be the exponent. Then du will be 2x dx. And you kind of have a choice here. You could decide to isolate the x or you can look at what you have. So I have 8x and I morally want it to be um, the same. So think about if I multiply by 4, 4 du would be 4 times 2, which is 8x dx. So that way I can have this nice easy substitution, which is 4e to the u du. Let's talk about our bounds. So when x is 0, I can look at um, 0 squared plus 1, which is 1, that will be the bottom bound, so that's just a 1. And then the top number, when x is 3, then u is going to be 3 squared plus 1, which is 10. Okay, so I integrate. Integrate, integral of 4e to the u is 4e to the u, that one's really nice. Um, this 10 is making me think we're going to have a big number. So I have 4e to the 10 minus 4e to the 1. Let's throw that in our calculator and give one decimal place. Um, that gave me 88,094.99. Again, it's from that 10 on the e that it became so big. All right, so let's try some applications. So we're going to start here. A company manufactures mountain bikes. The research department produced the marginal cost function C prime of x is 500 minus x over 3, where x is from 0 to 900. So C prime of x is in dollars. x is the number of bikes produced per month. We want to compute the increase in cost. And going from a production level of 300 bikes per month to 900 bikes per month, so we're going to set up a definite interval and evaluate. So 300 is our lower bound, 900 is our upper bound. We have the marginal, so we want to integrate to get the cost. And before I put it in, I'm just going to, instead of writing x over 3, I wrote one third of x. It just makes it easier. So the 500, when I integrate, becomes 500x. I'm keeping the one third. x becomes x squared over 2 and I have bounds of 900 and 300. Um, we can make that 500x minus the three with the two becomes one over six of x squared. So I'm gonna plug in my numbers. So I have 500 times 900 minus one six of 900 squared. I'm gonna put that in big parentheses. And then same thing, plug in 300, so I have 500 times 300 minus 1 6 of 300 squared. Again, just all at once into the calculator, and it says our value for C is 180,000. Another thing we want to incorporate in this discussion is something called the average value of a function. So remember, usually when you find average, you have to divide. So the same thing is true here. When we're finding the average, we need to divide. So the average value of a continuous function f over a closed interval a, b is the integral of 1 over b minus a, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So the bounds match the thing that I'm dividing by, and we're just going to subtract to get there. So let's try that. Given the supply equation p is s of x equals e to the 0.04x, we're going to find the average price in dollars over the supply interval 20 to 40. So I'm going to start with 1 over 40 minus 20. 
and I want the answer to be positive, so you have to make sure you do the larger number minus the smaller number. So 1 over 40 minus 20, the integral from 20 to 40 of 8e to the point 04x dx. 40 minus 20 is 20, so I have 1 over 20. Remember we have that shortcut, so I have 8e to the point 04x divided by point 04, and then we have to put in 40 and 20. So I'm going to kind of like put all the number parts together, the 1 over 20, the 8, and the divide by 0 0.04. And make sure you keep track of each little part there that you divide by the 0 0.04. So this all together, 1 over 28 and the 0 0.04 just gave me 10. I have e to the 0 0.04. There's x from 40 to 20. So I'm going to plug that in. I have 10e to the 0 0.04 times 40 minus 10e to the 0 0.04 times 20. All of that together came out to 27.27. So careful with your calculations, put parentheses where you need it in the exponents, but just take your time so that you don't get the number wrong. Let's try that average cost, but this time I have the cost function. So if the total cost in dollars of manufacturing X auto body frames is C of X is 60,000 plus 300X, we're going to find the average value of the cost function over the interval 0 to 500. So my interval 0 to 500, my function 60,000, watch the zeros, plus 300X, and then don't forget, when you're finding averages, you have to do a division, so 1 over 500 minus 0. So I have 1 over 500. The 60,000 will just pick up an x. The 300x will become 300x squared over 2. And then we get to put in 500 and plug in 0. You could, like, simplify just a little. So the 60,000 x is fine, 300 over 2 is 150 x squared, and then I have 500 and 0. So I need to plug in 500, so I have 60,000 times 500 plus 150 times 500 squared. But then luckily the 0, when I plug it in, just gives me 0, so I'm not even going to write that part. So my answer after all of that is 135,000. The next part of the application is something called useful life. So useful life of an asset is the amount of time the asset will be used to generate revenue for the company. So it's not how long you can actually use it, it's how long you think it adds value, right? So if it starts to becoming more expensive to keep it than to buy something else, then we've exceeded our useful life. So what we want to say is it's not a physical life. The useful life is used to calculate depreciation. So that's what we're looking at is how long is this depreciating? When has the depreciation hit its bottom part? And then we need to replace it. To find the useful life, we need to determine when the cost to maintain the item is equal to the amount of revenue generated by the item. So to say that like more like we've been talking is when is the marginal cost equal to the marginal revenue? So let's try that as an example. I have a rental car company finds its marginal revenue of a car is $27,000. And the marginal cost of the car is 9,500 plus 5,000 e to the 0.313 t where t is expressed in years. So we are going to find the useful life, but we'll break it down in steps. So step one, we're going to take the marginal revenue and set it equal to the marginal cost. So we have 27,000 is equal to 9,500 plus 5,000 e to the 0.313 t. Now we can do this algebraically or we can do it graphically. Graphically is kind of nice to see sometimes. So if I just plug both of these into the calculator, I get this graph and you can see the intersection point is four. So t would be 4. If you don't want to do it that way, then you are going to do 27,000 minus 9,500 is 17,500. And 
you're going to divide by 5,000, which gives you 3.5. And then you'll take the natural log. So the natural log of 3.5 is equal to 0.313. And then when you divide that, you get t is 4. So either you could go algebraically or you can go graphically and you get this value. Of. To find the profit of an item over its useful life, t, we integrate the marginal profit over the interval 0 to t. So we're going to integrate 0 to t, p prime of t dt. So if we go back to what we had, we had our revenue was 27,000, and that was our marginal revenue. We had our marginal cost was 9,500 plus 5,000 e to the point 313t. And I'm just gonna subtract them, right? So always profit is revenue minus cost. So when I subtract them, I get 17,500 minus 5,000 e to the point 313. We already know our interval is zero to four. We found that in the first part. So to get our profit in total, we are going to integrate from 0 to 4 of 17,500 minus 5,000 e to the point 313t. Luckily, we have that shortcut. So the 17,500 will become 17,500t minus 5,000 e to the point 313t divided by 0 0.313. There's our shortcut. We plug in zero, we plug in four. So we're gonna start with the four. So 17,500 times four minus 5,000 e to the point 313 times four over point 313, so there's our first part, minus, I have to go ahead and plug in the zero. It will make the 17,500 go away, but it's not gonna make the e go away. So I really need it over here. Lots of steps there to put that in your calculator, but you should get $30,106.54. Um, I do say be careful, maybe do some stuff that you can, maybe cross out the zero, say negative, negative is positive. So try to make this shorter if you can, because I know that's a lot of steps. All right, so that's the end of our integration. Make sure you go and practice. The best way to get better at this is, of course, doing it over and over again. We will take this and move on with it. So this part of definite integrals will continue as we finish out our lectures this semester. So it'll be important that you understand this concept for us to be able to do the next piece.